This video is made possible by CuriosityStream and Nebula. You can watch an exclusive full-length video examining the production, composition, and making of Tyler the Creator's masterpiece, Call Me If You Get Lost, plus more fascinating full-length videos about famous and impactful albums only on Nebula, which is available at less than $15 a year through our sponsor CuriosityStream at curiositystream.com slash Volksy. More on that later. Before I started writing this video, I made a quick poll for my subscribers to vote on. The question was simple. Do you think Tyler has the same talent and skill as Kanye? Can you call him the next Kanye of our generation? And honestly, the responses were way different than I expected. Out of 11,000 votes, 43% of people said yes, Tyler has the vision to match Kanye's legacy. 34% of people said maybe in a few years. And only 23% of people straight up said no, Tyler doesn't have it. To be real, that kind of shocked me. More than 75% of people said that Tyler is already or will one day have the discography to match Kanye's legacy. Honestly, I wouldn't even be making this video if it had been 40, 50, or 60%, but the fact that three quarters of people thought Tyler is the Kanye of our generation, I think that's worth talking about. The comparisons between Tyler and Kanye are kind of endless. Both have gone through periods of intense controversy followed by public adoration. Both are among the most talented producers of their generations. Both have their share of Grammy awards and number one albums. Kanye obviously has a head start here, and both of them create high production conceptual narrative records unlike anything anybody else is making today. But at the same time, they're very different people and they make very different music. But that hasn't stopped people from obsessively comparing them, trying to decide once and for all if Kanye is the sole king of creating ambitious hip-hop masterpieces in the 21st century, or if maybe Tyler has a claim to that throne too. Let's talk about that. First and foremost, ambition. Since day one, ego and ambition is one of the only qualities that's a flat-out requirement for success in hip-hop. In the early 1970s, DJ Cool Herc created the blueprint for hip-hop music and culture by building upon the Jamaican tradition of impromptu toasting, a spoken type of boastful poetry and speech over music. And Kanye, he knows ego. He knows DJ boasting. Cool. Standing up and I'm telling you, I am Warhol. I am the number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am Shakespeare in the flesh. Walt Disney, Nike, Google, now who's gonna be the Tyler, he can talk a big talk too. This is what he said to Larry King back in 2014 when he only had two albums out. Like in the future, I wanna like I wanna do films. I want people mention my name, I'm next to Wes Anderson or Quentin Tarantino. I don't wanna be I don't want my name to be mentioned next to other rappers. I got it. at all. And both Tyler and Kanye are renaissance men. Neither Kanye nor Tyler has limited themselves to hip-hop. Tyler scored an album for the Grinch movie. Kanye has a choir. And when it comes to clothes, this isn't your usual rapper merch. Yeezy being valued in the billions, with its clothes and shoes being universally recognized for forward-thinking designs. And while Golf Wang and Lafleur aren't necessarily household names, Tyler has carved out a unique niche for himself with heavily stylized pieces and countless unique accessories like bags, jewelry, books, and of course the iconic shoes from a few years back. And I can't even begin to sum up their talent when it comes to production. Both Tyler and Kanye have been producing their own music since their very first projects, and as many people know, that's how Kanye originally got his start in the industry, producing numerous hits for other artists before he ever released his first song. Tyler, too, has lots of production credits for other artists early in his career. He produced songs for Frank Ocean, Earl Sweatshirt, Mac Miller, and many, many more. But while Kanye still has production credits on his own songs, ever since the Dark Twisted Fantasy era, it's become much more common to see four, five, or even six co-producers credit on his work. Meanwhile, on Tyler's last album, there was only one co-producer on one track on the entire record. While in Kanye's situation, it might seem like he isn't interested in producing his own music anymore, it's actually the case that he's reached a point with his own skills where he felt he had completely maxed out what he could do on his own, and he wanted to branch out into even wilder sounds that he couldn't make by himself, that no one person could make on their own. Challenging radio, what am I doing? Yeah, well, I, I'm not I'm not trying to regurgitate myself. I showed, I showed people that I understand how to make perfect. You know, dark fantasy could be considered to be perfect. You yeah. know, I say, I know how to make perfect, but yeah. that's not what I'm here to yeah. do. I'm here to crack and crack the pavement and make new grounds. You so know, while Kanye has been focusing on pushing his art as far as he can, whether or not that means he's the sole producer of his own songs, Tyler is still developing his own style and figuring out how to push himself as far as he can go without diluting his vision. But despite their differences, what both of them have in common is constant reinvention. Goblin was edgy, dark, minimal hip-hop. But don't get me wrong, Tyler was far from unnoticed. His early work was top five on the Billboard 200, and especially with the popularity of Odd Future back then, Tyler was the king of alternative hip-hop at the time. 
Wolf was more melodic, while Cherry Bomb took a step in the other direction with crunchy, compressed production oscillating between jazzy chords and more chaotic, distorted sounds. Flower Boy went for a more organized, indie-inspired, accessible style and was all the better for it. It ended up defining the sound of indie-inspired hip-hop in the late 2010s. Igor was a heavily focused album inspired by Neo Soul with a lo-fi production sound, and it had a massive footprint. While Call Me If You Get Lost combines every genre Tyler has played with in the past, it has smooth, tasteful samples, raw rapping, and energetic mixtape sounds. In just six albums, Tyler has gone from an edgy, offensive shock rapper with minimal production to a chart-topping Grammy-winning artist with some of the most diverse production in the entire music industry. On Kanye's side, it's a similar story. His first three albums were shining examples of chipmunk soul, conscious rap, whatever you want to call it, it's timeless music that still sounds good today, but it wasn't until 808s and Heartbreak that he started pushing boundaries for real and bringing hip-hop to uncharted territory. While 808s is considered hugely influential, a pioneer album in experimental R&B and emo rap, Dark Twist of Fantasy two years later was the album that would go on to be considered one of the best of all time with its maximal sound. Yeezus is Kanye's most experimental record with a harsh industrial sound and The Life of Pablo is a massive, sprawling take on the trap era. Ye is a short, simple record tackling mental health and family dynamics while Donda was a messy yet ambitious vicious album with some of the most emotional and lazy moments on any Kanye record. So Kanye went from a well-known producer who couldn't get a leg up in the industry to the most impactful and most discussed artist of the 21st century so far. So does Tyler have a shot at holding that same position as Kanye? Well, let's revisit those two interviews we talked about earlier. Kanye wants to be Shakespeare. He wants to be Steve Jobs and he wants to be Google. What do all of those things have in common? Ubiquity. Everybody knows Shakespeare. Everybody knows Steve Jobs. But what does Tyler want to be? He wants to be Quentin Tarantino. He wants to be Wes Anderson. We all know their work, right? Well, we do, but not everybody does. Neither Tarantino nor Anderson are among the highest grossing film directors of all time, and they never will be. They're not even close. But they have something that Steven Spielberg and James Cameron will never have. Wikipedia says this about Wes Anderson. His films are known for their eccentricity and unique visual and narrative styles. Cited by some critics as modern day examples of the work of an auteur, three of Anderson's films appeared in the BBC's 2016 poll of the greatest films since 2000. And the same goes for Tarantino. Tarantino's films have garnered critical and commercial success, as well as a cult following. In 2005, he was was included on the annual Time 100 list of the most influential people in the world. Filmmaker and historian Peter Bogdanovich has called Tarantino the single most influential director of his generation. But none of his movies have ever ranked in the top 10 grossing films the year they came out. So for me, that's the key to understanding the debate between whether or not Tyler the Creator will ever become the next Kanye West. Because the answer is simple, he won't. He doesn't want to be. We've been through all these comparisons, and it's true. Tyler and Kanye are the same in a lot of ways when it comes to creativity, talent, design. They both have strong visions and unique styles that no one else can match. But Tyler doesn't want to be Kanye. He wants to be the best version of himself, and he's well on the way towards achieving that goal, especially considering he's just completed one of the best three album runs of any artist ever. But in my opinion, the journey he's on, the legacy he's working towards, doesn't have the same goals as Kanye. He wants to be himself, and that's something that should be respected, because Tyler's accomplishments can't be understated. He is, bar none, the most unique hip-hop artist of the current generation. There is no one that comes close to sounding like him, looking like him, or making the same production that he does. But the thing is, he's so unique, I don't think he'll ever have the impact Kanye has had on hip-hop. Kanye has a long history of hit songs. There are tons of artists that have taken heavy influence from his style and gone on to find success themselves, but Tyler is so far out there in his own lane, he's just not playing that game. He's not going to be the leader of the culture the way he is now. His music isn't that commercial, and he stays far from that pop sound. That doesn't mean he's not popular, because he is, but Kanye's goal has always been to elevate the sound of popular music. Tyler just wants to make the best music he can. While Kanye's albums aim to be better than everyone, Tyler's albums aim to be better than the one that came before it. In a way, I think this is a strength of Tyler's that Kanye doesn't have. Despite his persona when he was younger, he's ended up a really mature artist who values privacy and doesn't take away from the strength of his own voice by sharing his business. And I think that's a big factor that contributes to Tyler's music being in a world of its own. We only see the parts of Tyler that he wants us to, and his style is so unique and specific to him, his albums feel special. These are the biggest glimpses we get into his life, and it makes him feel like the most imaginative rapper today. So for me, the biggest differences that make the Tyler versus Kanye comparison make sense are pretty simple. Tyler doesn't and probably never will have the same commercial success as Kanye. Kanye has nine number one albums in a row, almost 25 Grammys, dozens of millions of records sold. He mentored and helped grow the careers of other superstars like Kid Cudi, Travis Scott, he's a huge, huge part of pop culture. Meanwhile, I think Tyler is more like the king of the underground. 
which maybe sounds ridiculous because he sells millions of records and he hits number one on the Billboard charts and he gets Grammys too. But in terms of traditional hip hop culture and pop culture in general, he doesn't really try to fit in like that. Remember when DJ Khaled dissed Tyler saying, you never hear Tyler in barber shops or out of cars driving by. The thing is, even though he was just being a salty baby because Tyler's album was better than his, he was kind of right. Tyler has no aspirations to make mega popular radio hits, and he never has. It doesn't look like he's gonna start now. And while maybe that means Tyler will never be as famous as Kanye, at the same time it gives him an advantage. He gets to stay true to himself 100% of the time and pursue the most unique sound he possibly can in whatever way he wants. While Kanye may have changed the landscape, Tyler created his own. So yes, Tyler and Kanye both started as underdogs with visions to change everything. And in their own ways, they did. They've both spent their entire careers working on fashion, visual art, production, creating an entirely unique experience with every project they work on. And they're both once in a generation artists who will be remembered for a very, very, very long time. And I do think it's possible that over the next few years, Tyler will earn a place next to Kanye. And right now, he's just about the closest thing there is because of how strong his vision is and how cohesive and flawless his albums are. And he could go in so many directions after the success he's had over the last five years. But right now, I would call Tyler a more focused artist than Kanye. His albums really do feel feel like Wes Anderson films. They're so full of little details, and Tyler has such a strong vision for every single song he makes, it's impossible to say he's not the most creative rapper of his entire generation. So while Tyler may be the closest thing we have to a new Kanye, calling him that is inaccurate, because that's just the nature of what they really are. They're both creative geniuses, unmatched and one of a kind in both of their very different ideas and execution. And personally, my favorite Tyler album is Call Me If You Get Lost. But while I was making a video covering the sound of that album in detail, I realized it wouldn't be possible to upload to YouTube because of their bogus copyright rules. That's why I made my entirely separate standalone video breaking down every single aspect of the album's production, and I put it on Nebula instead. A closer look at Call Me If You Get Lost is even longer than this video, and it's by far one of the best videos I've ever made. Again, the reason why this isn't on YouTube is because it just wouldn't be allowed on the platform. Nebula is a different platform without any ads, without an algorithm. It's a place for high-quality creators to post not only their amazing regular content, but also to work on exclusive original projects projects that would never work on YouTube. Some of my favorite creators are on Nebula, like MKBHD, the greatest tech reviewer of all time, or Polyphonic, the best music essayist on the internet, and over 150 more amazing, interesting channels like FD Signifier, Wendover Productions, Real Science, and Adam Neely, to name just a few. And the best way to get access to Nebula and all of these fascinating exclusive videos is through our bundle with CuriosityStream, which gives you access to both services for less than $15 a year. And CuriosityStream has some really fascinating stuff on their platform, which I know you'll enjoy, with thousands of documentaries with topics ranging from music to history to science and technology, and many, many more. One of my favorites right now being their documentary about the career of Mr. Beast, telling the story of how he became the biggest YouTuber of all time. Anyway, I can't imagine a better deal, to be honest. You get two streaming services, both of which are full of fascinating content that I know you'll enjoy if you're already a viewer of the channel, for less than $15 a year. You get fantastic exclusive videos like my full-length closer look at Call Me If You Get Lost, and I get support for my mission of continuing to make the highest quality music documentaries on the entire internet. So click the button on the screen, which will take you directly to the sign up page where you can get CuriosityStream and Nebula for less than $15 for the year, or go to curiositystream.com slash Volksy to support the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching.